Welcome to Island Fab, where we bring you the latest in local fashion events and bring all that's happening in local fashion directly to you. Today we're here at the Heritage Inn and I'm Catherine Nurse, I'm your host. I am also a lifestyle and fashion blogger with www.citiesandislands.com and I also have my own cosmetics line, Immortal Beauty. Today I'm here with my esteemed panel of guests. First, Stephanie Ramlugan, who's an accomplished stylist. Then we have Keegan Simon, designer and creative director of the Individual Aesthetic. And our girl on the street, Renee Pouchette, who also has her own line, Amp Swim. Today, we're going to get right into talking about Tobago Fashion Weekend, and we'll be right back with you. Oh, yeah. Epic. Epic. Oh. Oh, yeah. Epic. Epic. Welcome back to Island Fab. We're going to get right into it, talking about Tobago Fashion Weekend, which just happened in May. Tobago Fashion Weekend, this is its fourth installment, and um, the organizers, led by Ashley Christmas, are really focused on bringing the beauty of Tobago and our island style to, you know, a larger market. Um, a lot of different menswear designers showed, and that's what I want to talk about first, especially with Keegan, who's our resident man, <laughs> and we believe that he can yeah. really, you know, Give us his opinion on some yeah, of these styles I'll, I'll that we saw. First, let's start with the good. We saw BCO style show a lot of various tropical blazers and short combinations for men. What did we think of that? Yeah, I think it was good. I mean, okay. knowing the designer <laughs> for a while and knowing her kind of aesthetic is really great to see something amazing come out of her. So you would wear yeah. a floral blazer with yeah, some floral I, shorts? And some floral slippers, yeah. <laughs> yes, floral I would, headband. yeah, I mean, Rissan has a good eye for fashion, so I kind of Rissan being the designer. Rissan Martin, yeah. So, I mean, anything she does, I'll kind of trust myself with her. Yeah, okay. She's got a good job. Renny, if your boyfriend came out to meet you on a date, you know, I think floral I'm, blazer. <laughs> no, I'm cool with the floral blazer. I think it's actually trending now for males. They're not afraid to wear the prints, not afraid to explore that side of fashion without being considered gay. Mm. Um, I think I've seen a lot of our local people play with prints lately. So I don't think it's bad. I actually like to mix of the, the bright colors with the floral prints. So I'm not against it. I actually like the collection. And Steph, I know you have a very a strong eye for fashion. You know, she had like all sorts of different contrasting colors of lining. And I thought that was a really interesting take. I don't know. Interesting, yes. I don't know if I liked the choice of the contrast in lining just because the pattern on the jackets themselves was so bold. And I feel like let's kind of Let's not scare off the men, it down. <laughs> because it's not something that they wear right now, but I do like the pairing of them with the shorts. I feel like that made it a little easier to okay. wear. Okay, all right. And then on the other hand, we had House of Byfield, who is um, designed by Carmichael Byfield. Um, he's not local. I think he just told me that he's from the from Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah. Um, what did we think about his looks? It was a lot of blue and white chambray printed. It went in another direction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for the, the stuff I saw, it looked like the same thing over and over and over <laughs> and over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Right. It's just different patterns of the same thing. I thought it would have been a better thing to try to, you know, expand and give us like a spectrum of different, different looks. colors at least, at, at least a color, because it was the same. Like they just went in a fabric print. store and just yeah, say, give yeah. me all of that. <laughs> and then, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, you know, with these manufacturing minimums, that's kind of what you <laughs> have to do. <laughs> no, Where can I put this one fabric into every single piece? I mean, piece? for what I saw, uh, uh, I like the, the cut and treatment of, of the, the work. So it was good. It's just I wish I saw more color. And Would you wear it? Yes. I need to see the color foods. I need to see a different <laughs> style of certain things and then, yeah, I can see if I wear it. But other than that, I would. I mean, it looks well um, stitched 
and constructed. I know words like construction. So yeah. Good, good. Yes, I'm impressed. I'll, I'll try it. I'm try impressed. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, me, personally, I thought it was just one guy. Like, one look for one guy over and over again on the runway. And um, I'm not really into that guy, particularly. So it yeah. didn't really speak to me. I didn't know. Stephanie? For me, uh, it was hard to love it with the styling, for some reason. And then the models. Because I've seen his work on, uh, when he showed one like with Italian models and an Italian setting. And it's, it's worked for me in that, in that scenario, but I just, I don't feel the Tobagonian man looked in, like, in his skin. Okay, you do those, a chambray vest. No, That's yeah, not exactly. really done. No, I mean, and, and then there was a, one with like a kind of skirt overlay. The typical Caribbean man is not going to wear that. And then the necklace armor. It was a bit heavy. Yeah, I just, <laughs> It looked a bit, yeah, it looked a bit. If you want to contrast that with Risan's collection, I think that Risan did it better. More successful. Any? I would have to agree with Keegan. I think it looked like the same thing over and over. Um, but the tailor and I would agree is it was quite on point. So. Okay. Let's move right along to our next collection that we're going to discuss. Um, Delia Allen. Um, her collection was based on the Buku Reef. She's actually from Tobago, and so they had a, a wide variety of Tobagonian um, talent to choose from for this fashion show. Um, any thoughts on Delia's collection? Um, Delia is super talented and I think she can make anything. It's just sometimes I wonder about what she chooses to make. I like the inspiration very much, especially in context with this whole bioluminescent river that was happening in Trinidad and then that was her take on Buku Reef. To me, that's what I received, that it was, it was dark and then they had like neon lighting up and whatnot. But um, again, styling and I feel like that is a sore point for Caribbean designers, the styling, I don't feel um, they pay enough attention to it. And even if you dissect pieces out of the look, I mean, I don't know how many of them are actually wearable, you know, because you want people to wear the clothes and yes, stand out, but you want them to stand out for the right reasons. And I don't know if a lot of those looks were communicating that for me. Personally, I went to the bookery just the other day and it didn't look so bright and blue and green. Um, no, but it's true. Like the bookery, what we know of it now is that it's dead. It's a completely dead reef. It's not necessarily inspiration I would pick. And um, it was overdone. I thought it was overdone. Mm -hmm. And for a person who can literally make, as you said, anything, anything mm -hmm. I often wonder who's going to buy these clothes, which is a big issue in our industry um, all over. Who is literally going to wear this? Any? I'm not a big fan of the collection, um, mainly because there's nothing I can wear. There's nothing, nothing that I can wear from the collection. Um, I love the colors, and that's about it. Keegan, anything to say? I'm good. All right. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the next thing I want to talk about is that Tobago Fashion Weekend had a lot of support from international bloggers. Um, Street Etiquette, which is a huge Tumblr blog um, that really focuses on men's wear, and the ever popular Fashion Bomb Daily, both were invited and both came to cover the events. However, when we went back to look at this coverage, we were really excited by what we saw. We didn't really think that Tobago Fashion Weekend necessarily had center stage from this coverage. Um, let's talk about street etiquette first. I know Keegan is a huge fan of this blog. It was started by Travis Gums and Joshua Kissy, and they really have a really interesting male point of view and yeah. male perspective. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> I like the blog and I like their, their sense of eye for all these kind of things because to see them have this eye and then go to with GQ and all these kind of things, having like a real sense of what fashion men, is, is that a term, fashion men? Fashion men. I can make fashion it today. Fashion we'll go with that. Yeah, <laughs> could actually wear. I think that more speaks to me and to see that happening, I say, wow, they come into, you know, to Tobago and then see like the Instagrams of like the them, airport them on the beach really the airport <laughs> them, with, them with some money popping like a yeah. handful of hundred dollar bills yeah I and mean we saw nothing from the fashion show nothing about Tobago nothing for even why they were there I think they did a Q&A I've heard nothing about this q and I don't know what questions they were asked I don't know what they were asked what they were required to speak on I don't really know as to what truly happened with them, but from what I would assume for it, they just came down to like research. Paid vacation, is to me. I would say research, <laughs> so they could be able to see young, upcoming designers and talents such as myself. <laughs> you know, one could say that. But yeah, I mean, the representation wasn't as 
you know. As we would hope. As we would like it right. to be. But on the other hand, we had Claire Summers from the Fashion Bomb Daily who took lots of street style pictures of the um of the attendance of the fashion show and then actually did a really comprehensive post about her picks, her favorite selections. Rasan was, was one of her picks yes, actually. Saw, yeah. yes. Um and so I find that was actually on the other hand, that was a really great push for us. Um her blog is seen by hundreds of thousand people daily. And um, it was nice to see her kind of getting to meet people and really putting us to the forefront. Seth? Yeah, and um, especially with the street style, I think, it, I don't know how to say this without sounding so bad, but um, <laughs> I don't know if the runway shows are a good reflection of the fashionable people in, in Trinidad okay. and Tobago. Um, a lot of us don't wear the things that we see on these runways, you know? But uh, when she did kind of take pictures of the people, the attendees and so on, they looked so good and I felt like that was a truer reflection. And, of us. Of yeah. Okay. I agree. I agree. So that's it for this week's installment of Island Fab. But in the meantime, you can always find us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, look out for our behind the scenes pictures and our coverage there of all the local fashion. Thanks guys for being here and we'll see you next week. Baby